Have you ever wondered how technology could bridge the gap between disability and dignity in underserved communities? Maxwell Chikambuzo asked himself the same question and answered it with a groundbreaking solution. In a continent where access to prosthetic limbs is often a luxury, his 3D printed innovations are rewriting the rules of mobility. Meet Sarah, a 12-year-old from Malawi who lost her leg in a car accident but now runs faster than her classmates thanks to Chikambuzo's prosthetic. Her smile, wide and unburdened, is a testament to how innovation can restore not just limbs but dreams. Across Africa, thousands like Sarah face stigma and dependency due to the high cost of traditional prosthetics. Chikambuzo's vision cuts through this injustice, one 3D printed limb at a time. His workshop in Harare hums with printers crafting limbs tailored to each recipient's body and needs. Unlike conventional methods, which take weeks and cost thousands, his process takes hours and slashes prices by 80%. The secret lies in open source designs and locally sourced materials, ensuring sustainability. For Joseph, a farmer who lost his arm in a machinery accident, the prosthetic meant he could hold his daughter again. For Grace, a teacher who survived a landmine explosion, it meant standing tall in front of her students without shame. These stories aren't just about mobility, they're about reclaiming identity. Chikambuzo's work exposes a harsh truth. Africa imports 95% of its medical devices despite having the talent to build them. His defiance of the status quo has drawn both admiration and resistance from established industry players. Yet, with every limb printed, he proves that homegrown solutions can outpace outdated systems. The ripple effects are staggering. Children returning to school, parents resuming work, communities seeing disability differently. In Kenya, a group of teens inspired by Chikambuzo's model launched their own prosthetic initiative using recycled plastic. In Nigeria, a hospital partnered with tech hubs to replicate his methods, reaching rural areas for the first time. This isn't just innovation, it's a movement. Critics argue that 3D printed limbs lack the durability of traditional prosthetics, but users like Sarah wear theirs daily for two years without issue. The real barrier isn't technology, it's mindset and funding. Chikambuzo's next goal? A mobile 3D printing lab to reach remote villages where need is greatest. Imagine a future where no African child misses school because they can't afford a limb. That future is already being printed, layer by layer, in a small workshop in Zimbabwe. The hum of 3D printers fills Chikambuzo's workshop, a sound that now symbolizes hope for thousands across Africa. Each machine works tirelessly, layering thermoplastic into custom-designed limbs that fit perfectly, something traditional prosthetics often fail to achieve. For David, a fisherman in Mozambique who lost his arm to a crocodile attack, the prosthetic meant he could finally grip his net again. His story isn't unique, just one of many where technology meets tenacity to rewrite fate. Chikambuzo's journey began when he saw a documentary on amputees struggling with expensive, ill-fitting prosthetics. That moment ignited a fire in him, a determination to find a solution that was both affordable and accessible. He spent nights teaching himself 3D modeling, scouring the internet for open-source prosthetic designs he could adapt. His first prototype, crude but functional, was made from recycled plastic and spare parts. Today, his designs are sleek, durable, and tailored to the needs of farmers, students, and laborers. Traditional prosthetics can cost upwards of $5,000, an impossible sum for most Africans, where the average income is less than $200 a month. Chikambuzo's limbs? A fraction of that price, sometimes as low as $100, with no sacrifice in quality. The secret isn't just in the printing, it's in the community-driven approach. Local clinics refer patients to his workshop, where scans and measurements ensure a perfect fit. Feedback from users is incorporated into each new design, making every iteration better than the last. Take Amina, a seamstress in Uganda who thought her career was over after losing her hand in an accident. Her 3D printed prosthetic has interchangeable attachments, one for holding needles, another for gripping scissors. Now, she's not just working again. She's training other amputees to sew, creating a ripple effect of empowerment. Schools for disabled children, once underfunded and overlooked, 
are now partnering with Chikumbutso's team. Kids who once hid their stumps now proudly show off prosthetics decorated with superhero logos and bright colors. The psychological impact is as profound as the physical. Confidence replacing shame, independence replacing reliance. But the road hasn't been smooth. Skeptics dismissed his early work as a toy solution unworthy of medical use. Regulatory. Hurdles in some countries delayed distribution, forcing him to navigate bureaucratic red tape. Yet, with every limb delivered, the proof was undeniable. This wasn't just working. It was thriving. International NGOs took notice, offering grants to scale production. Engineers from Europe and America began volunteering their expertise, refining the designs further. What started as one man's mission is now a continent-wide movement, with satellite workshops opening in Kenya and Ghana. The future? Chikambutso dreams of an Africa where no amputee waits years for a limb, where 3D printers in every major hospital can produce prosthetics on demand, where disability no longer means disadvantage, thanks to innovation born from necessity. This isn't just technology, it's a revolution one layer at a time. A 3D printed prosthetic isn't just cheaper, it's smarter. Traditional methods require molds, manual adjustments, and weeks of waiting, but Chikumbutso's process is streamlined. A smartphone app scans the residual limb, creating a digital model in minutes. The design is then tweaked for comfort, weight distribution, and even aesthetics. Printers using carbon fiber reinforced plastic ensure durability without sacrificing flexibility. For manual laborers, grips are textured to prevent slips. For children, limbs are lightweight to accommodate growth spurts. This level of customization was unheard of in Africa's prosthetic industry before now. The environmental impact is just as groundbreaking. Where traditional prosthetics rely on imported materials, Chikambutso's team uses recycled plastics and locally sourced polymers. Waste from failed prints is melted down and reused, creating a near-zero waste cycle. In Lagos, a partnership with a waste collection startup turns discarded water bottles into prosthetic material. It's not just sustainable. It's a blueprint for how medical tech can align with ecological responsibility. The economic ripple effects are staggering. Small businesses are emerging to maintain printers, train technicians, and distribute limbs. A woman in Rwanda, once a tailor, now operates a prosthetic decoration service, adding personalized art to limbs. Another in Zambia sells protective silicone sleeves, extending the lifespan of each prosthetic. This isn't charity, it's a self-sustaining ecosystem. Critics once asked, can 3D printing really replace traditional prosthetics? The answer lies in the numbers. Over 4,000 limbs delivered, 89% still in use after three years. Users report less irritation, better mobility, and crucially, pride in their devices. The next frontier? Neural-controlled prosthetics with early trials allowing users to move fingers via muscle sensors. Chikambutso's team is already experimenting with solar-powered charging stations for electronic components. The goal is clear. Make advanced prosthetics as commonplace as eyeglasses. Governments are taking note. Malawi's health ministry now subsidizes 3D printed limbs for children. South Africa is integrating prosthetic printing into public hospital training programs. The African Union has named Chikambutso a health innovation champion, a title he uses to lobby for policy changes. But the real heroes, he insists, are the users. Like Tund, a drummer who lost his arm but now performs with a prosthetic that holds his drumstick perfectly. Or Layla, a college student whose prosthetic arm has a hidden compartment for her USB drive. Their ingenuity in adapting the tech fuels further innovation. The message is spreading beyond Africa. A clinic in India adopted the model, slashing prosthetic costs by 70%. A Brazilian startup is using Chikambutso's open source files to serve Amazonian communities. This isn't just an African solution. It's a global one. So what can you do? Support NGOs funding 3D printing labs in developing regions. Donate old smartphones for limb scanning apps. Share these stories, because the biggest barrier isn't technology, it's awareness. Chikambutso's work proves that the future of prosthetics isn't in expensive labs. 
It's in communities, in resilience, and in the belief that no one should be left behind. The printers are running. The revolution has begun.